I'm Sylvie. I'm a level one student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. I'm excited to announce that this year students at the Global Forecasting School voted to add Ben Bernanke and Olivier Blanchard's recent paper on pandemic era inflation to our list of foundational readings in economics. This is part of our tradition at the Global Forecasting School to highlight influential papers that offer valuable insights for future economists. Today's presentation is dedicated to summarizing this paper for our students and others interested in understanding the key takeaways and implications. Let's start by breaking down the Bernanke Blanchard model or BB model. It's a streamlined framework that captures the dynamics of price inflation, wage inflation, and both short and long term inflation expectations. By including critical shocks from energy, food, sectoral shortages, and labor market tightness, it provides a nuanced view of inflation. For the US, the BB model found that the pandemic era inflation was initially driven by relative price shocks and shortages, with labor market pressures contributing more gradually. As these shocks eased, inflation decreased, but labor market tightness began exerting steady upward pressure on inflation. Building on these US findings, 10 other central banks adopted the BB model to study similar inflationary pressures in their own countries. Adjustments were made based on each economy's unique structure and data, but overall the model proved adaptable. In most countries, we observed that inflation initially surged due to shocks in energy and food prices as well as supply shortages. As these effects waned, labor markets took on a greater role in sustaining inflation, although with significant variation across countries. Interestingly, while tight labor markets became more influential in maintaining inflation, this effect was generally modest. Unlike the 1970s, where inflation spiraled due to wage-price interactions, today's inflation expectations are better anchored, partially due to central bank credibility and the absence of wage indexation. A standout aspect of the BB model's application was its consistency in interpreting price shocks. Energy prices, for instance, had similar initial impacts but varied in their persistence. Food price shocks followed a later pattern, peaking around 2022 and early 2023, while shortages remained an enduring inflationary factor. Using the model, each economy's response to shocks revealed similarities. Generally, price shocks showed immediate strong impacts on inflation, subsiding fairly quickly. However, tight labor markets led to a slower and more persistent inflationary effect, though often modest in scope. A crucial takeaway for policymakers is that while price shocks may be behind us, the persistent pressure from tight labor markets means achieving inflation targets. The last mile could require loosening labor conditions. But as the BB model shows, reducing labor tightness doesn't immediately lower inflation due to the flat wage Phillips curve observed across countries. In conclusion, the BB model provides a shared framework to understand pandemic era inflation dynamics across diverse economies, highlighting the importance of initial price shocks, the role of anchored expectations, and the last mile challenge. For policymakers, it suggests that navigating the final reduction in inflation may require nuanced approaches specific to each country's labor and price dynamics. As we wrap up, I'd like to mention that if you appreciate the work of the Better Policy Project, you'll resonate with its goal to enhance economic and financial literacy, democratizing high-quality education globally. Through the Global Forecasting School, we offer opportunities for individuals to become world-class economists. In many cases, achieving this level of expertise would traditionally require significant financial resources, such as PhDs from institutions like MIT, Princeton, or Harvard. At the Global Forecasting School, we believe that while PhD programs have their value, not every element is essential to excel in policy work. Instead, we focus on the core aspects of academic knowledge, distilled by experienced mentors to bring out the best. Our team includes former IMF leaders, including Douglas Lexton, who is the director of the Better Policy Project, as well as esteemed advisors like Robert Ford, Iwanis Halikias, and Hamid Farouki. They provide their expertise to help shape the next generation of economists through accessible, targeted education. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to support the channel and be sure to hit the like button if you found this content valuable. Comments are always welcome. We'd love to hear your thoughts and continue the conversation. 
This has been Sylvie, a level 1 student at the Global Forecasting School and an economist at the Central Bank of Armenia. Thanks again and see you next time.